Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today we're down in one of the ship's 400 hertz generator rooms. We're uh, going through some manuals and stuff down here, but it reminded us that we actually got to see one of these generators when we visited Wisconsin the other week. So, uh, what, what is all this stuff for? This room was originally built as part of a 5-inch magazine. When they removed some of the 5-inch guns in the 80s, they uh, partitioned off this uh, space and half of it got added onto the radio transmitting room and half of it uh, got turned into one of the 400 hertz generators rooms. Iowa-class battleships were refit in the 80s to have three 400 hertz generators. These generators are converting the ship's normal power, which is produced by the eight ship service turbo generators, two auxiliary diesels, or the shore power that we're plugged into, uh, and that's at 60 hertz. It's the frequency at which your normal electronics at home operate on. The stuff you plug into your wall at home is 60 hertz. Uh, but some of the more modern equipment on the battleship, some of the stuff that's added in the 80s, operates at that higher frequency, 400 hertz versus 60 hertz. Some of the equipment that operates at this higher frequency can be made significantly smaller because of this frequency. For example, uh, motors. So it's a very common frequency in the aviation industry. You know what else flies like a plane? Cruise missiles. So in the 1980s, when they add updated uh, radar sets and missile launchers and things like that, they also needed to produce the power for those. So they installed these three sets. One of them comes in this magazine. The other two go into the old radio room just aft of turret two, forward of where we are now. Now, Battleship New Jersey doesn't have any of these anymore. I'd never seen one. I didn't know what they looked like. I know what the mounting bracket for them is for. It's fairly large, but I also know that they got it out through a 26-inch wide watertight door. Shortly after the ship uh, was given to the museum and before we even opened, the Navy decided that the three 400 hertz generator sets that we had on board were still functional enough that they could use them on other ships. And so they sent a team of folks down to disassemble them and hoist them up, uh, essentially one of the uh, powder loading trunks, to get them up out of here. And it breaks down into relatively small components. They got it out of here. And they actually helped the museum in a big way, uh, the, the riggers who came out to do this, by helping get some of our equipment down in here. So the system that runs our uh, telephone system on board the ship and some of those other things uh, was, was loaded on by those guys. We had a bunch of uh, retiree aged volunteers around like how are we going to get this down below. These guys showed up to take parts out of spaces that aren't on the tour route and they got that stuff down below for us. So huge help uh, but because they're gone we didn't know what they looked like. But last week we went and visited Wisconsin and she still has hers and I hope nobody from the Navy is watching this. Just forget that they have them. They probably don't work anymore. Don't go take them. Uh, and that's one of the things I love about all four Iowas being saved, is that we all have something different. Uh, Iowa herself has a relatively intact radio transmitter room where the other Iowas have theirs removed or demilled. Wisconsin still has her uh, for 400 hertz generators. I don't know if any of the other Iowas do. I've been on all of them now, but Wisconsin is the first one where I was able to walk through that door and see them. And so we, we've got some pictures from our time there. You can see these are pretty big things. And there's a hundred other things going around. Uh, like, because we're missing our 400 hertz generators, we converted that space back to look like it would have during World War II. That's one of only three spaces that we have backdated. So none of the other Iowas have uh, a World War II radio room. It's super important to us as the ship that receives the Where Is Task Force 34, uh, the World Wonders radio message. So uh, th that space is hugely important to us. We're able to restore it, but if you want to see what this original equipment looks like, it's still out there uh, on another ship in the exact same context. I want to say that's one of the few places where the walls are even painted the same color between Wisconsin and New Jersey, which isn't always a given. 
Uh, and just one other thing to point out while we're in here, we've talked about this in other videos, <laughs> but I just love, they, they put in all the breakers for this equipment here, um, and they had a couple of spares down at the bottom, and they labeled them the warp drive, the deflection shield, photon torpedoes, and transporter room. I'm pretty sure none of the other Iowas ever got those installed, so we're still the best there. It's too bad we can't power them anymore until we pull off the perfect heist on Wisconsin. So what's something that's only open to the public on one of the Iowas, or that's only been saved on one of the Iowas that you've seen, you think is really cool, you're glad that at least one of these ships had it or was able to bring a tour route down to that space? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. We really appreciate the support of the other Iowa-class battleships who were able to visit and talk to and find out information like this. You can support us by clicking on the link in the description below to donate, or by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us and the channel. Thanks for watching.